So, hi, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. I've started recording, uh, which is why everybody is in mute so that. Um, we can have a recording in high quality for everyone to watch later if they want. Uh, I'm Shoshana Del Fuente, product manager in Esploro. Uh, with me today are Tammy, director of functional management, and um, Yara, director of product management in Esploro. And I'm really excited to be here with you today because we have some new exciting features and some of them are even from the ideas exchange which makes me very happy to present things that came up from our customers and we were able to develop in a second i will share my screen with you start from highlights as we do um, just share Okay, uh, so here are the release highlights that we've sent you. And we will start today with the Smart Harvesting AI. Tammy will present to us the new changes and new dashboard. And in just a second, I will allow Tammy access to sharing. Do you uh, see? Yes. Me? Okay. Yes. So, uh, good day, everybody. I want to sh um, share with you some of the uh, updates uh, related uh, to the smart harvesting framework. Um, the first, um, we have added some uh, dashboards uh, related to assets and uh, that are brought in through smart harvesting, the also author matching task, and also researchers. Um, giving you some analytics, and I'll show you this in a, in a bit more detail in a minute. Um, we've also um, had, we also made some, some more changes, enhancements to the author affiliation, which I explained in the last session. In November, we added the functionality where we bring in more author affiliations. We enrich author affiliation data uh, that we get from CDI with uh, data we, we fetch from Microsoft Academic. And as I explained also, we now match um, those author affiliations with the external organ research organization entities, the records. So we have a match between the, uh, the metadata and, and an actual entity. Um, and we also make use, more use of the affiliation in the author matching algorithm. So that's what we introduced in November and, and in December, there are a number of, of, of uh, updates or enhancements related to that. First of all, we now in, in November, we use the author affiliation to um, uh, in a negative way. In other words, you know, if the, ma if the affiliation didn't match, then we would lower, give a lower rank. Now we also make use in a positive way so we can also get a, a, a stronger match based on the affiliation. Um, another thing is that we've improved the matching between the author, um, you know, the author affiliation, the metadata that we get either from CDI or um, Microsoft Academic and the, uh, the research organization records um, by also taking into account several abbreviations, common abbreviations that we're finding in the data. So, for example, um, we may get um, the, instead of it saying uh, University of Iowa, it would say Univ of Iowa. And so and now we take this into account as well. So there's also improved matching. Uh, finally, before I start showing you the, the dashboards, I want to bring to your attention that unfortunately, um, uh, we had to roll back uh, one of the changes or one of the, um, yeah, one of the changes that I reported, if I'm not mistaken, in November, um, where um, we remove the limitation to the number of authors that um, we will handle on um, an incoming record. Uh, just to those of you who don't recall this, um, again, I just want to remind you that we uh, do we try to all match all authors in an article or a publication or an asset. 
Um, and if there are many, 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 many authors, this can take considerable time. Uh, due to the fact, you know, that we, we introduced already uh, quite a while ago the dedicated queue for smart harvesting and there were some additional enhancements, we thought we could remove this limitation and that's what I announced last month. Um, but uh, in reality, we found there was still, we found there was an issue. Um, so we have to, we roll this back. So we're back to the 800 author limitation. Um, but we're not giving up and uh, uh, more to come on this. We will find a solution. So uh, these are in brief the updates and now just in a little bit more detail about the smart harvesting dashboards. Tammy, I want to stop you just for a minute. Yeah. And sorry for sure. bothering you, but I um, failed to mention in the beginning that if anyone has any questions throughout this webinar, please, uh, there's a Q&A section in, um, feel free to use it. We'll try to answer during the webinar. We could also, you could um, contact us later, but anything that comes up and you'd like to ask, uh, please use the Q&A section. Sorry, Tammy, go ahead. No, that's fine. Um, okay, so, um, uh, so we've added uh, some dashboards that um, will give you an overview of, of, of what's happening in terms of smart harvesting in your institution. Um, so there are dashboards in, in, in several areas related to the assets coming in, related to author matching tasks, and related to researchers. Um, and for each of these um, areas, there are three different dashboards for the different types of smart harvesting. So we have smart harvesting. This is uh, smart harvesting, you know, the, let's call it the classic smart harvesting, where we go out and we explore and we bring in records from CBI. Um, also within the smart harvesting framework, we have smart expansion via citation lists. This is the ability to load um, records in uh, for a researcher in um, uh, bit text or RIS format. And uh, you'll see a third option um, called smart expansion by CSV, which is a, an improved version of the um, uh, smart expansion by a CDI or what was called also CDI migration that is part of the import profiles. Um, so you'll see this here also, the functionality itself will be introduced in January, okay? But because it's already been added to the database, already added to the system, uh, because we're working on it, um, so we already added, there's like a placeholder for it already in analytics, um, but at this point, uh, you know, you, there's no data. So just be aware, this is something that's coming in January, and of course, in the next session, I'll give you a lot more information about it. So what, are, what do we have in the dashboards? If we, we look at this dashboard here for smart harvesting, this is focusing on assets. Uh, so you can see the number of assets that were added to the repository, there's some graphs, uh, number of assets that were added to the repository based on the asset type, and also for which academic units they were added. This is based on the researcher academic unit. Um, and here below, there's a bit more information breaking down uh, into statuses. So, you know, the number of approved assets, the number of assets that we captured, that we harvest, that we brought in, number of assets that were rejected, um, and number of provisional assets. This means that these are assets that came in, but they haven't been approved yet. Um, so we have this by, by asset type and also by academic unit. And so it's the same concept for also smart expansion via list, and in the future, smart expansion via CSV. So that's one topic, the assets. Another topic is the author matching um, tasks. So there's a dashboard here. And again, I'm looking at the dashboard for smart harvesting. Um, so the dashboard for smart harvesting uh, uh, gives you, this gives you the number of um, author matching tasks broken down by status and rank. So I can see from here that, you know, in this environment, in this institution, uh, uh, we've approved, the vast majority of them have been approved manually. We still have some that are pending approval. And this also gives us a breakdown um, of the statuses uh, of the um, author match, matching tests based on the rank. Um, taking this a step further, 
Um, this dashboard um, gives you information about pending, specifically pending tasks. So you can see from here how many pending tasks you have. Um, and there's a breakdown here, uh, uh, visual and in, 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 in table mode of um, pending tasks by asset type and by the researcher affiliation, in other words, by the academic units, um, those that are pending. Um, and I'm afraid I don't have it ready to show you, but there's a similar um, dashboards for also the number of researchers for whom you ran smart harvesting uh, or smart expansion. Um, so you can just see, you know, how you're moving in terms of a uh, number of researchers for whom these processes have already been run. Um, these reports are in, uh, these dashboards are available through the, um, through analytics uh, from the list of dashboards. Um, and I think with this, I, I finished and I'm going to pass it back to you, Shoshana. Thank you, Tammy. Unless there are any questions there that you see for me? Uh, none so far. Okay, well, I'm here and can also answer later. So I'm back and sharing. And now we're in the most exciting part of Exploro portal on discovery, where we have quite a number of updates. Uh, first, I'll list them as they are here in, in the email. Uh, there's a new section in the homepage for custom links. I'll show you that soon. We also allow reordering the sections in the homepage. Uh, all this is part of configuration, as well as the ability to hide or return the drop down menu in the portal header. Uh, so, all of these I'll show you now in live how it's done. Um, okay, so here we are it's in the Sploro configuration. And then to start here, welcome to Esploro, and I'll go into the configuration section, portal and profiles. Now we're talking about the portal and the portal homepage specifically. So I'm going into the homepage configuration. And you'll see that we added a few more rows here to the options on the homepage. Uh, we allow custom link section, which I'll show you soon, but not only one section, but actually up to five sections, which can be added to the portal. Here is an example of the portal. The top hasn't changed. It's as you expect it. And you can see here is a new section, which includes, uh, can include, it's up to you, uh, a picture, a title, uh, some kind of explanation text, and a link out to anywhere that you want to link. The one section can include up to three links, but as I said, there are up to five sections which you can configure and decide to activate. Okay, so um, they're not active in the beginning, and once you add things in the configuration, you'll be able to activate. So I'll show you how this looks, the custom link. This is what we saw on the home page. Um, as I said, the title, some kind of text if you want, the URL that it points out to, because that's the main point of the section. And if you want a, um, an image. So for example, here there, um, <clears throat> Sorry. Here there are two types of things, just in uh, examples of what you might want to add to this section. If um, there's a special occasion, such as Albert Einstein's birthday, you might want to showcase uh, the research works in your repository written by Albert Einstein. And you could add a link that'll take you out to um, Einstein's outputs. Um, okay, this is problem is that I'm signed in. 
So I will sign out, which is why I got to, it's supposed to be my profile instead of Albert Einstein's profile, um, but I'll get rid of that and we'll start again. Let's try here. If I go into here, we go. Albert Einstein. You could put in the link that goes directly to the output, and this is um, this is a public view. I'm not signed in. So this is one option. Is all the outputs of one researcher with an institution. You can have um, another option would be if you want to showcase all the outputs of a specific uh, department. Uh, for example, here the School of Natural Science just won an award and you want uh, easy access to people who are interested in the research done by the School of Natural Science. So the link that we have here is a link to the natural sciences research unit within the portal. Now, the reason I'm going into such detail here is because uh, some of you have joined our base camp about collections, and this is one of the options for showcasing collections. And if you have any suggestions, or if you think that this is um, a good way to showcase selection, so you're welcome to write about it in Basecamp. Um, I'll go back here. As I said, you can uh, add as many, you can add up to five sections of links. And in addition, I'm just closing it to make it uh, look better. Uh, something that another new feature that was added is the ability to change the order of the sections. So here in the portal, we have the we have the the, the top, uh, which is always there. Then we have the links. Here we have the downloads by country, different things, and at the end, top ten. And just to show you how it can work. I'll just drag the top 10 here all the way under the essentials, the links that we saw on top, I'll take all the way down and I'll save. That's how to reorder the sections. I'll have to refresh the page so that the changes take place. And I will now see the top 10 here in the beginning under the header and the links all the way at the bottom. So this is the second thing that we've added this month, uh, the ability to reorder. And the third is here, this menu button, the menu button, which was added recently and opens the ability to choose uh, different sections for browse or search. Some of you have requested to remove this, so we've made it configurable. That is also in the configuration of portal and profiles under homepage configuration. But in this case, it's in the header for footer section of the configuration. And here, there's a checkbox for include drop down menu. If it's checked, the menu is included. Once I uncheck it and save, if I refresh the page, this menu will disappear. no longer available. So anyone who wants to remove it, and there have been such requests, happy to inform you, you will no longer see it if you don't want to. I am going to go back to the email since we've finished the section of portal. And the next are changes we've done to the researcher profiles. 
the researcher profiles, also configurations, two options here. One is being able to manage personal information that the researcher can see in the private view of the researcher profile. I'll show you what we had until now and the change that we made due to customer requests. In addition, uh, we've also been asked to allow administrators to enable or disable the researcher activation request. And uh, we've done that as well, and I will show you how it's done. Uh, since I can't see the questions and answers while I'm here uh, showing my screen, I will look into them when I, when I finish um, reviewing everything. So if you do have questions, I will uh, refer to them later. So we said the researcher profiles again. Um, I will actually let's go just to see how it is before and then after. Um, I'll go into Albert Einstein. Uh, I do it from here because it makes it easier for me as an administrator to be able to see whether it's a public profile or private profile. So when I view public profile, that allows me to see how it's displayed to anyone who's looking. In this case, the public profile includes an email and an address. That's, that's already been configured, so public email and address. If I go into the um, private profile by clicking edit profile, I will see that the researcher contact information includes a phone number also, in addition to the email and address. Uh, now, the, the, um, the information that uh, we allow these, these um, deciding which displays and which doesn't is not only the contact information, it's also the global IDs. This is something that, uh, that we've allowed up till now in the configuration here for profiles, researcher profile privacy display settings. Up till now, for all these uh, things that we display, we had three options, either to display publicly, the signed in users only, or only in private profile. Those were the three options. We've added another option for never. So as you saw, public the public uh, profile, we displayed um, email and and the work address, but we did not display the phone number. The phone number was for signed in users only. So that's um, uh, not, the, not the phone number, the private, <laughs> this didn't display. It was, um, okay, so there are private profiles, et cetera. Uh, what I wanna do now is remove the work email and have it never displayed, not even in the researcher profile that the researcher um, him or herself sees. I'm going to save this. I'll have to go in again um, to refresh. So I will, in a second, close Albert Einstein's profile. Go back to researchers. We'll see that even if I open the profile in edit mode, which is really the, the researcher view of their profile, the email address has disappeared. Uh, I went through this fast, so it might seem like uh, nothing has changed, but before the email address didn't appear in the public, but it did appear. Uh, researcher uh, profile and now uh, now it's gone. So basically anything in the list of configurations for privacy display settings, uh, which includes the contact information, identifiers, as I, as I said, also different tabs, awards, all these, which up till now 
allowed uh, making differentiation between uh, public and private, or also sign in users. Now you have the option for never. I'm going to put this back as it was because the email we want everyone to see. And I'm going to go to the next option that we talked about changes in the profile, which is found in the researcher profile settings configuration that, of course, the admin is responsible for. Here we've added a section for activation of the profile and, and not, not the activation of the profile, but to allow researcher to request activation to the profile. If you check it, the researcher will be able to ask for it. Um, and if not, then, then it won't appear. I'm not going to display this now because Albert Einstein already has a profile, so he do, does not have the button asking to activate his profile. It's already activated, um, but you should be able to see this easily within your institution. That's it for the profiles. And uh, now for her, my favorite part, if I can find the email. There we go. Okay, uh, changes in the research information hub. Now the email you got did not include these light bulbs. Um, this was an oversight, these uh, light bulbs, they are an indication that We've developed things that were requested through the ideas exchange and in the past release, the release for December, we've actually developed 2 such requests that came in through the ideas exchange, uh, which makes it uh, uh, makes me even happier to talk about this because. Um, it's always great to share that we're doing things that uh, helps our customers and the customers have thought about uh, where we might not have. The first one is a SOAR deposit for Esploro records in a Esploro format. Uh, up till now, we had uh, SOAR integration with ETD admin uh, format, uh, also with Conferis. Uh, but now we actually have opened it up to anyone who wants to import um, assets using sword in a plural format um, and there's there's no need to map for mapping if you have it in this plural format uh, any questions about the technicalities i'm not showing this because there, there's not much to show it's actually set up on on the sword server side and not on the plural side um so, so there's not much to show, but uh, if you're interested in this uh, capability, uh, you can find uh, documentation in the developers network. It's basically using the base URL that's configured for sword and adding slash explorer. And that should work for you. Another thing that we've added is a fix to the cover page. So that it doesn't uh, display the word embargo when there's no embargo. I'll go into that now and uh, show you how it was before and what's been done since. I will use uh, a different environment here uh, just because it has the cover page set up. And I'll I'll show you the issue and and as as it was um raised in the ideas exchange and how it was solved uh together with you we discussed the solution so for example we have uh, many research assets okay i'll actually go into the advanced search we have research assets in which the access rights were specified as embargo uh, this is something that uh, happens many times when you want to delay the release to the public of any asset in the repository. And um, we always give an embargo end date, whether it's a year after publication or a specific date that you chose. In any case, there's always an end date for embargo. And once the embargo is over, the asset becomes open. But uh, we still store the information about the embargo on the access rights and the date. 
in order to know whether the acid itself is uh, open, we have another calculated field, which is called open access. Okay, and this also um, is used to decide what's displayed on the portal. So we could have, now I'm going into something that's open access, yes. So what we have here is assets that had an embargo. The embargo is finished, is over. So now they're open access. Now what happened in this case in the past is that these assets with their files were displayed in the portal. And the cover page, uh, it was written that they're embargoed, which um, does not really make sense because they're available to everyone on the portal, so they can't really be embargoed. I'll uh, open one of these. You can see they're all open access. Uh, let's try this one and look at it before. Previously, I checked the ones above, so I always like to mix things up. It's taking a little bit of time to open, but I want to show you, I want to show you the embargo and that it's passed and the file. So here we go. Here's an asset. Uh, you can actually see that there are two files. One of them was always open. One of them was embargoed, but the embargo has passed. Okay, so this is the Neuromitter Speech um, published version. PDF, so it will have a cover page. Uh, and I'll quickly go to the viewer to see how it looks. This is, uh, this is the viewer here, but it, um, it's just like going in from the portal and you will see the cover page if it works. Try one more time. There we go. Okay, so this is opening the viewer in the portal for the specific asset. Uh, we said what we need is the Okay, this one also this one also has a cover page, but we want to look at the the published one of the PDF. Yes, this is it. Okay. And um, we can see, yeah, the published and this is the cover page. It's um a bit small, but in the past, there we go, this is one small. In the past it would say embargoed here when it's open to the public. So this is a cover page, no more embargo, it's open access, everyone can see it, and there's no problem here. So these are the two changes that we've made to the hub in the past month, both from Ideas Exchange. The last thing I'm going to show you is um, an update to analytics for the grant funder parent field show you here how it looks okay in the past we've had the grant funder parent under the grants um, subject area or grant subject area we had the funder and the parent uh, just a short explanation what the parent is for example we have different funders such as uh, national cancer institute national heart lung and blood institute uh, all these lists here these are funders, but they're basically all under the umbrella of the NIH, National Institutes of Health in, in the US. And therefore, it's uh, helpful to be able to see not only the grant funder, but the grant funder parent when doing analytics. So as I said, in the, in the grant subject area of analytics, this uh, already displayed. And what we've added this time is a, to the asset subject area. You can go into the asset subject area and be able to see the grant funder parent as well. So that's update to analytics. Let me close this. Sorry about that. Um, more things that are important to list. Of course, everything can be found uh, in the documentation if you have any. Uh, questions of how things work. Um, also, the release notes, you can find them always in the release notes section of the Knowledge Center. And um, last month, I presented how to export a citation list, which was uh, developed for November. Now we have a new video available, um, this how-to. 
export a citation list, which you can uh, view in the Knowledge Center or on YouTube, uh, which might will explain it in a bit more professional way done by our training team. That's it for our December uh, release. I'll just tell you what's coming up and then I'll check to see if there are any questions. Uh, a few very, very exciting things that we've been working on for a while, which will be released in January. First of all, our researcher activities in the Research Information Hub. Uh, activities such as um, um, organizing conferences or being on a board or peer review of articles, all such things that are research activities, uh, researcher activities, you'll be able to add in the Research Information Hub and uh, also to view them on the researcher's public profile. In addition, uh, and, and this is sort of um, a favorite of mine because uh, we've been working on it for a while, is the option to update existing assets using a CSV file. Uh, we've had it up till now, it was a bit more cumbersome, the files were, were long and um, difficult to handle, now be able to export only the relevant fields for you, export in a CSV file, and make changes to the file, you can make changes to a whole um, set of assets, and then uh, import it back, upload it into Esploro, and the changes will be made to the assets in the set. This is all coming up in January, so you have what to look forward to. I'll stop sharing now and I'll look in to see if there are any questions. I see the chat is empty, Q&A looks empty to me. I'm glad everyone is finding everything clear. Of course, you can always contact us. Any questions that you have, contact us. Uh, Okay, I see uh, I've got a question. Thank you, which has disappeared. That's very interesting. I saw the question come in and now I don't see the actual question. Um, okay, I hope I remember what it said. A uh, question, um, um, question about the sword integration. Um, so, what I can add here is. Aaron, do you want me to read out? The, okay, now I see the end? workflow involved with sword. If that's the only question. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we actually have a. Um, we're coming out soon with a, a documentation about uh, the sword workflow. Um, I can show you in the developers network. It's again, I'm not going into it uh, too much because it is technical and um, less my expertise, but I will display soon where you can find it. And um, I'm trying to talk while, I, <laughs> while I'm going into here. Okay, I'll, sh I'll share with you again. If I can find the share button, here we go. Okay, uh, we have in the, the developers network, which is developers exlibrisgroup.com. Um, or do you go into Explorer and then you can find under integration swords. Okay, so you can um, here find the information. You have to configure a sword integration profile. That would be in the uh, configuration section, I believe, in general. And let's look here for, I'll just do this and then it'll be easier to find. Integration profiles, okay, in general, integration profiles. There are all kinds of profiles to set up. A one can be sore, uh, I can find it easier here because you can in, 
have one sword server to set up. Yeah, I'm not going to do now a whole um, discussion of sword because I don't know how relevant it is to more people. Just you need to know that you have to set up the sword integration, and this is something that has to do with the sword server that you have in your institution. So it's something that is set up outside of Esploro and is then integrated into Esploro. You will find the base URL here and then you can um, you can choose your, your username and password to use uh, for the sword. As I said, the base URL, it's used for everything going into Esploro and Alma, it's the same base URL, but then you add the slash and the information for what uh, type of file you're adding. So if it's slash Esploro, it's um, it's an XML in Esploro uh, format. If it's a splash, uh, slash Esploro ETD admin, it's for ETD admin. And we also have slash converse. Those are the different things. Um, so here we have more, more information. I think that's enough for now. If you have more questions about sword please uh open a support ticket or um yeah open a support ticket and if this is something that interests you for basically um it's it's not migrating it's a push of assets into esploro um in bulk if you have them in the esploro format I'll stop sharing, uh, but again, uh, if, if, Yara, if you do see any questions that I haven't addressed, I'll be happy to hear them. No, no question. No questions. Um, great. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you, hearing you, talking to you again next month until then uh, have happy holidays and we'll see you then i hope everyone enjoys bye